The state of Minnesota has a dark and genocidal history. State officials just recently decided to retire their state flag, which is a perfect representation of settler colonialism. The original state flag in its seal was first developed back in 1858, and this was during a time when the Dakota people and other indigenous communities in the state of Minnesota were being driven off their ancestral homelands. Let's take a closer look at the flag. Like I said, it's pretty ugly. It's actually been voted one of the ugliest state flags in the United States. But in the middle, you can see a European settler who's farming the land and a Native American who's on a horse. And apparently this is a representation of Europeans taking over Minnesota territory and Native Americans moving westward, basically being driven off their land to make way for settler colonial progress. This is pretty much the story of settler colonialism throughout Turtle Island. You have European settlers who are occupying lands that do not belong to them. They're committing acts of genocide. They're cleansing the territory of indigenous communities to make way for European settlement. The Minnesota State Seal, which is on the flag, is pretty much a celebration of U.S. imperialism and a clear example of indigenous erasure. What we call the state of Minnesota belong to the Dakota people and other indigenous nations. These indigenous communities had been in this territory since time immemorial. Broken treaties, forced removal, and acts of genocide cleared the land for European settlement. Enter Alexander Ramsey and Henry Sibling, key figures in the story. Ramsey, as the first governor of Minnesota, played a huge role in the Dakota's dispossession of their land rights. And Henry Sibling, he profited from this injustice, becoming incredibly wealthy, while the Dakota people were suffering immensely. Alexander Ramsey even helps pass legislation in the state of Minnesota that makes it illegal for indigenous people to exist and live in the state. In addition to becoming incredibly wealthy from taking Native American territories, Henry Sibling also played a major role in the creation of militias that were meant to destroy indigenous communities. Ramsey, Sibling, and Seth Eastman are the individuals responsible for developing Minnesota's state seal and flag. Seth Eastman's wife, Mary Eastman, also writes a poem about Minnesota's state flag, and it's pretty revealing. So let's check it out. Give way, give way, young warrior. Thou and thy steed give way. Rest not, though lingers on the hills, the red sun's parting ray, the rock bluff and the prairie land, the white man claims them now. The poem, which is stark and brutal, reflects the settler colonial mindset that leads to the genocide of the Dakota people. Some five years later, the Dakota and other indigenous communities would be completely driven from Minnesota territory. On December 26 in 1862, 38 Dakota warriors were executed in the largest mass hanging in US history. Thousands of Dakota people are displaced. Many die in concentration camps like Fort Snelling and Crow Creek. Scout bounties are also created by the state of Minnesota and settlers can earn up to $200 for every dead Dakota. It's a sickening settler colonial nightmare. Finally, after all these years, the state of Minnesota has redesigned their flag and state seal. Here it is, check it out. It's not quite as ugly as the old one. I think this is a really good example of how the horrors of settler colonialism can hide in plain sight. There are monuments and place names all across Turtle Island that celebrate the destruction of indigenous peoples. You just gotta know a little bit about the history and where to look. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section.